everybody. Dutch Sense here. 6.13 p.m. Central Time on Friday, November 8th, 2013. And a lot of people are asking me if I think that this current storm that's hitting the Philippines is man-made or being controlled. And I'm going to have to respond with a confident yes. Again, a confident yes that these storms are being man-made and possibly fully controlled on their paths to where their final destinations are. Now, to get into that, I would have to go and show you several different videos that I've made. I'll have to put links down below. We do not have time to go into that in a video. This video would be an hour and a half long if we went and looked into each one of these things that I'm getting ready to tell you. You're going to have to do that if you're curious on the subject. Now, I've made these videos, each one five minutes long, showing previous microwave pulses that appeared on the morphed background microwave imagery and that's a composite image that's formed by the SSEC up in Wisconsin, the Sims. And what we're looking at here is a backdated image. You guys can come over here to their site and they've got this previous years indexed under recent. So here is the current storm, for instance, the strongest storm to ever form according to several mainstream media outlets, the strongest storm to ever form just hit the Philippines with 195 mile an hour sustained winds and 235 mile per hour gusts. Now they call it over there Yolanda, the name of the storm, and we are calling it Haiyan. I think that's the designation from NOAA. So here's the storm that's currently hitting and uh, you can see it's just barreling across there. Well, we can follow this back, okay? You can follow this storm's formation back over here, okay? And what we've seen several times is out here near Guam, of all places, we see a large microwave spiral-shaped pulse that comes from the north and then extends to the south over Guam. Following that, we see rotation begin to develop and form into these cyclones. And it's happened time after time now. It's happened like four times. And I've documented each one on my website. Again, I'll put a link down below so you guys can come over to my site and check this out. Now, on the 27th, October 27th, a second microwave pulse happened. We first had the first one, and you can go back through my videos and see that. But the second one happened, and that's when I took people over to the shortwave monitoring station to show them what shortwave looks like, uh, a spiral shape in essence, on a 2D screen when you're looking at it as a signal represented on a screen, the computer decodes it and gives you what look like spiral shapes. Well, the same thing could be said for the morphed microwave background imagery. Same thing, only over a huge area you'll see the same kind of shape, but it appears here over the ocean coming from the north. Now, there's somebody who asked the question, and I think it was Montograph, asked, is this possible? Well, here's my post, okay, showing you back at Typhoon Francisco. I titled this, Large Microwave Pulse Produces Two Tropical Storms in Asia Within 48 Hours. And we'll watch this here. There, okay. And out of that, rotation develops. Well, you also have Guam right in here. And then look where it comes from, though. When you see the pulse or originate, it actually originates to the north. And it's coming from up here just north of Japan in this direction. Wait for it again. There we go. Coming from there. Well, what's up there? What is there? We know Guam is loaded, but let's go check it out. I've got Google Earth open here, and we're using the Climate Viewer database. I recommend you guys download this. Jim Lee has put this together. This is all the electromagnetic points on the planet that are man-made. Every major antenna array every Star Wars program radar that's been stationed. These are all radar stations placed to monitor Russia. You can zoom in on each one and check them out. Let's just do that just to prove. There we go. And he's got the designation, um, even the frequency information. You can click on these and you can see uh, what they're operating at, their coordinates, how they operate, and what they're doing. Now, of course, this is the US let's go over and check and see what's going on just north of Japan. Now the area itself just north of Japan is the Kuril Islands area. It's also managed by China and Russia. They kind of all 
have a little border there, a little border separation only by a few miles. Um, so let's bring it over. Here's Japan. And let's triangulate our position based upon where the pulse was coming from previously. Okay, here's the Philippines. We'll come down here. Here's Guam. And we've got Space Command, uh, all sorts of stuff here at Guam. And then the pulse coming from up in this direction. Well, looks like Stanford has a few facilities out here, VLF antennas. But if we come just a little bit north, you've got all sorts of space observatory outposts. You've got uh, even got NASA. You've got Stanford up in Russia. Uh, they're all part of a giant network, and they share facilities somewhat. However, this area here, where the pulse is coming from, there's only a few things actually here. You've got Missile Defense Space Command over here off the coast of Alaska. You've got Stanford VLF, and we've got the Russians. Not too much in China. Let's go check here. Here's our VLF array, part of Stanford. Alpha Station C. There's only a few things in the area coming from the north. Again, here's Guam coming from this direction. What do we have here? Oh, okay, we've got the Hokkaido Super Darn. Super Darn is high frequency radar that's used with another program called SPEAR in conjunction with SPEAR for polar heating and observation. So they will observe the heating that's being done by SPEAR using Super Darn. Super Darn looking like a radar up over the North Pole, over the horizon radar, and they will use SPEAR to heat an area to hundreds if not thousands of degrees and observe the plasma using the radar from Super Darn. That's a pretty interesting thing that they do. To answer the question, was this particular storm man-made? Well, there's a way to find out. Let me take you back over to the MIMIC. And MIMIC is, again, the morphed integrated microwave imagery. And we'll click on the MIMIC TPW. And we'll go look at the West Pacific. All right, again, here's our current storm currently hitting the Philippines. Let's go to recent. And I've already looked at these, so I know which ones to look at, but we'll go back to November 1st. Okay, now this storm here is Typhoon Crosa, which came just over the north of the uh, Philippines, south of Taiwan, and that's where the 7.2 hit at the same time that this storm was passing. So not only did we have an earthquake beneath the Japan, Francisco, and Japan WIFA at the same time as they intersected here off the coast of Japan, 7.2 magnitude earthquake, directly underneath at the same time. This storm here had an earthquake directly underneath it at the same time. And then behind that is where the current storm that's hitting now formed. And here we go. You can see it. Right here, a different type of microwave pulse. Again, a spiral shape, but uh, it shows up. And it's coming just a little bit further out to sea. So the last time it was more here near Guam, this time further out to sea, but coming in the same relative direction, which puts it north of Japan. So this current massive storm, the largest in human history, starts its rotation as soon as the pulse happens. It's undeniable, look at the date. Wait for it, there we go. Okay, and it's going right up to here. So that would put it north of Japan, up to the Kuril Islands. Let's go back over here. And that reduces the culprits much further. So somewhere in this region here. So we've got US Space Command and some outposts here. Let's see what we've got, if we've got any pictures. Oh, okay, okay, definitely we do. We've got, um, let's see. Let's go check this out. I have no idea what we're looking at here. This will be the first time I've ever read it. Of course. Of course. 
Don't you love it when that happens? Satellite Communications Facility. There we go. All right. God bless Jim Lee for putting that together. Satellite communications going on out of there. Let's see if we got a better picture of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got dual domes. And what else do we have? Corbidane radar. Twelve fifteen to fourteen hundred megahertz. Wow. Really? All right. Well, that pretty much answers the question. I mean, that's the only thing up here. I mean, you don't have anything else marked. We've got a series of volcanic chains, a couple VLF antennas, which we know it's not VLF showing up. It's high frequency. So there you go, guys. Is, are they responsible indirectly? Maybe it's satellite communications gone wrong. Maybe they don't mean to be causing it. You hope that's what it is, because if not, they are just responsible for causing a microwave pulse, which went over the same area at the same time that the storm formed. That The chances of that happening on its own are phenomenal. So, I mean, it, it would definitely have to have some kind of, be having some kind of effect. And to see it multiple times in a row, I mean, over a few weeks' time, undeniable. I've documented it all. You guys can come look at the documentation. Watch the pulse happen. Watch the rotation begin. They have to be related. They have to be. The chances of having a pulse happen over the same area and then having the follow-up earthquakes afterwards, I mean, that ties in with everything we know about high-frequency, low-frequency earthquakes and weather modification. If you guys don't know anything about this, we have about a month's worth of reading here, if not more, that you can come through and look it all up, see that the experiments have been done already, that the professionals are fully talking about it, weaponized weather through the U.S. military, owning the weather 2025, we've all heard about it, if you haven't, you need to go read up. The question is, were they serious when they said they planned on owning the weather by 2025? Was the Air Force serious? I mean, we're halfway there if not three quarters of the way there, which means that this is most likely um, something to do with man-made weather. I mean, have you guys seen what's going on outside your door lately? Need I remind you? I'm not trying to lecture you, but you guys can just come over here and watch a couple of these videos posted today. World's strongest storm ever. Remember last year's freak tornado season? The chemtrails, literally. Cloud seeding, 101. Chemtrails is a slang term. I don't mind anybody using it, but it's cloud seeding. That, let's call it what it is. They are spraying particulate aerosols into the atmosphere, and it's having a weather effect. You add in frequency to that, and it becomes small metal particles in the atmosphere that get hit with a high frequency. You know what happens when you put aluminum into a microwave. Now imagine small particles of aluminum spread out over a large area that you hit with a high frequency pulse. It's not going to have a lightning effect but it's definitely going to have a heating effect 